Okay, so now this next video is going to be a little bit more defensive. It's actually going to challenge uh, conventional wisdom. Oh, my phone is a little wobbly right there. Uh, so basically, conventional wisdom tells you if you you know do good in school, okay, you go to school, you, you get this degree, right, then you can you can get this awesome job, okay. And if you get this awesome job, then you have a really, you know, a really nice life. Okay, that that is conventional wisdom, right? In a sense, this is part two of the video for gambling. Conventional wisdom, it's a lot like gambling. I mean, you really have no freaking clue what the heck is going to happen, okay? Um, so I'm going to give you an example. I have a couple of friends who, who have this scenario, which... It kind of really sucks, but it's true because I also found myself in the same scenario. Okay, I went to school, I got my degree, okay, I got a degree in chemistry, okay, I got a bunch of A's, I got a couple B's. I was, I thought I was a pretty good student, right? Conventional wisdom says, yes, Ken, you are a good student, you went to school, you got this degree, okay? So after that, uh, you know, I was only about 40000 in debt. There's other people who are, you know, $100,000 in debt. Um, you know, if you're, if you're living and eating big or like, let's say you're in California, you can be upwards to $150,000 in debt, which I have a couple of friends who are, you know, that much in debt. Uh, and then after you get your degree, you're essentially looking for a job. So for me, I actually struggled to find a job uh, partially because, you know, every time I applied, I got the interview, you know, they're like, man, you look good on paper, get the interview. And then they say, okay, yeah, you did really good at the interview. You have really good grades. You're really knowledgeable about your stuff, but you know, you don't have experience. Okay. So you, I, we thought you were a good fit, right? I think you're qualified, but you don't have experience. So we, we can't offer you this job. Okay. So Basically, I was back on the drawing board. I was thinking, you know, <coughs> sorry. I was thinking, I got this job in my mind, right? I'm thinking I'm going to get this job in my mind. And it, it didn't happen, okay? So I went back to the drawing board and I thought, you know, how the heck am I going to get experience to get a job that requires experience if I can't even get a job in the begin with. Okay, and the jobs that I could have gotten, I really didn't want because they were only like $13 an hour, maybe $14, $15, $16. Um, really, why the heck would you even go to school and get debt if you can make that much money with, without going to school? Okay. So you see how that's, from my point of view, conventional wisdom is gambling. So you're, you're betting on conventional wisdom saying, if I follow the rules, I'm going to go to school, I'm going to get this degree, I'm going to try and get this job. You know, the odds are there's a lot of competition out there. You don't have any control over that. You, you can't guarantee that you're going to get a job. Yes, you may have a slight edge, but that doesn't mean you're going to get a job, especially if no, you have no experience. Okay. And that also, you know, doesn't guarantee that you can keep your job. So back to some of the friends I had, right? They got a degree, they struggled a little bit, like one or two years, they finally got a job. And, you know, as of 2020, it's really unfortunate. Um, COVID-19 pandemic has hit and now they're out of jobs. So here they are. You know, instead of owing $100,000 in debt because they worked a couple of years, they still own, you know, about $70,000 in debt. They still have to pay their rent. They still have to eat. They still have to survive. And they haven't been working for the past four months. Okay. That's pretty detrimental. So you did all this work relying on conventional wisdom. And in the end, because you have no real control, you have no other skills or other ways of making money you pretty much get stuck 
and you pretty much you get screwed okay so that's why I'm trying to teach people uh, the three main things in my wealth triangle is you know you have a day job number one is the day job uh, number two you got to have your side hustle to make an additional income and number three you got to have your high return investments so if you can have these three things and you combine them you can generate a lot of wealth so a lot of my friends who lost their number one day job uh, they're staying at home there's nothing really they can do they're just you know getting more and more debt piled up uh, one of my friends actually maxed out his credit card which I told him not to do um, but here's the but I taught him how to trade okay and by teaching him how to trade he was able to you know take some of the borrowed money he had right play options in the stock market and actually make enough money where he was able to sustain his rent and his living expenses on the profits he made from stocks so that that's that's really powerful um, I don't know he's just really grateful about it uh, if you join our network I'll definitely uh, create the discord you'll be able to meet him you'll be able to see his story you'll be able to you know just hear a lot more from him and uh, that's something that really makes me excited so I'm still working on the discord right now um, but the last question that I have here on these these notes is you know why why do you play options instead of playing like penny stocks or or small caps or just buying the stocks well for me that's really simple um, if you buy penny stocks you're essentially buying junk companies which don't have any particular you know value they're not really making any money they'll have news which you know pumps up the stock you know good news and they'll have bad news which makes the stock tank so they're really volatile um, that's a good thing that's dangerous but in order to make a lot of money from penny stocks because of the volatility you got to have you know a pretty decent amount of money right and you got to have really really good timing you can't really I mean you can swing pennies a little bit but in a market like this where the market's uncertain with penny stocks you, you need a lot more money to make more money okay that's one thing um, and this second thing also ties into why you just don't buy stocks is because when you buy stocks you're speculating you don't actually have control over you know the stock price All right so if you buy penny stocks number one or if you buy stocks number two the only way you can make money is if you buy low and you sell high so the stock price has to be bought okay and you have to sell it higher than what you bought it for that's the only way you can make money selling you know or actually buying and then selling penny stocks or regular stocks and that's why I don't do it one I don't have a lot of money to do that and two there's only one way to win sell higher than what you bought it for okay with options it's completely different it's all based on leverage okay with leverage basically rather than you know using three hundred dollars to buy let's say ten shares of a stock and if the stock moves up one dollar right it goes up one dollar you spent three hundred dollars to buy ten shares so one dollar times the ten shares you make ten dollars okay but if you bought an options contract it has leverage so with leverage with three hundred dollars you can probably buy about three option contracts which is the right to buy 100 shares per contract. So you essentially have the leverage of 300 shares for three contracts, right? So if the stock price goes up $1 and you have leverage of 300 shares of the stock, do the simple math, $1 times 300 shares. So this price goes up $1 times 300, you're gonna make $300. Now, obviously, there's going to be a little bit of, you know, difference in calculation based on, you know, volat implied volatility, the intrinsic value, the extrinsic value, and a whole bunch of other factors, the delta, the theta, you know. But the general idea is with leverage, you can make a lot more money. The other thing is with options, you can win on calls if the stock is going up. 
you can win on puts if the stock is going down. So it really does not matter which way the market's going if you're playing options because you can win if it goes up and you can win if it goes down. So that is why I play options and that is why I believe options is the most viable way of trading because you can trade in any market and it literally has no effect on how much money you can make.